chapter one, chapter note. Even though your name will be turning twelve, I wrote her a little mentally younger. Every time there is a son or daughter of Stark, they're always brilliant, so I wanted to make her a little handicapped instead. She is brilliant, but she acts a little younger and is treated a little younger than other kids her age. Your name ran home in excitement, backpack still swinging on her back. She waved at the gardener that was digging in the flower beds next to the tower. Hello, Mr. Gates. The middle-aged man looked up at her and smiled, waving back. Hello, Miss Stark. How was school today? It was great. We're learning about World War II and history, so I'm going to ask Mr. Rogers if he can help me study, your name said, bouncing on the balls of her feet. And my birthday is tomorrow, and Daddy said I could skip school if I wanted to, but I don't think I will. I like school. Well, that's good, Mr. Gates said, leaning on his shovel. His slightly graying black hair was combed back, and his amber eyes twinkled in kindness. Don't ever drop out, kid. School was a gift. Of course not, mister, your name said, getting ready to head back to the compound. Whole, how old are you turning? He asked kindly. Twelve, your name said with excitement. I have to go, though. Daddy always gets worried if I'm not in by 345. Of course. Have a blessed day, young lady, Mr. Gates said, and then went back to digging. Your name skipped the rest of the way to the Avengers compound. She headed over to her daddy's work area first, Friday letting her in. Hi, Daddy. I'm home. Hey, Ladybug, Tony said, spinning around in his chair. He set aside the Iron Man helmet that he was working on and opened his arms, letting your name run into them. He kissed the top of her head. How was school today? It was great. We learned how to calculate the distance between planets and stars in science. We're learning about World War II in history, and we've moved on to exponents and fractions in math, your name said excitedly. But I hope we kind of speed up on the planets, because our next topic is animals. Look, Tony chuckled. You gonna ask Capsicle about helping you with your history homework? Daddy, it's not nice to call other people names. Your name said solemnly, as she always did whenever Tony called someone something other than their name. It's a fun name, Tony said, kissing the tip of her nose, like how I call you Ladybug. Or do you not want to be my Ladybug anymore? He feigned a hurt look. She squealed, wrapping her arms around his neck. No, I do, I do. Tony laughed, picking her up and carrying her out of his lap. Okay, Ladybug, now run along. Steve and Natasha are upstairs in the kitchen. I'll make sure to eat dinner with you. Okay, bye, Daddy, your name said, and ran up the stairs instead of taking the elevator. Welcome home, your name, Natasha said, already putting out the saltine crackers with peanut butter on them, along with a glass of milk on the table as your name skipped into the room. Hi, Auntie Nat. Hi, Mr. Rogers. Your name greeted the two people in the room excitedly, sliding her backpack off of her shoulder and plopping it onto the chair next to her. She also saw Loki and grew excited, running over to him. Hi, Mr. Loki. Loki smiled affectionately at her. Hey, little Stark, how's Midgardian little people jail? Your name pouted, which Loki thought was adorable. It's not jail, it's fun. Jail is for bad people. Loki chuckled. I take it you had a good day? Yes, she said, and then suddenly grew shy and said, I have to interview someone that I look up to, and I was hoping to interview either you or Teddy. Loki smiled. Bless her little heart, wanting to interview the two people that were hated the most on the planet. Well, how about you ask Bus Bucky, okay? I think he'd like that. Yeah, he would, Steve said, smiling over his newspaper. Where is Teddy? Your name asked, looking around for Bucky. She had started calling him Teddy from a really young age, when she'd heard Steve call him Bucky Bear. And he did have some of the best hugs, so she called him Teddy, short for Teddy Bear. Him and Uncle Sam are out on a run, Nat said, tapping the plate. Now eat your snack and drink your milk before you start on your homework. Your name quickly climbed into her seat next to Mr. Rogers and ate her peanut butter crackers and milk. She pulled out her history homework first and asked, Mr. Rogers, will you help me? It's on World War II. Of course, Pumpkin, Steve said softly, putting his newspaper to the side. The two of them worked on her homework, going through it quickly, before she moved on to math by herself and then science. She looked up in worry as she pulled out her English assignment. Teddy isn't back yet. He'll be home soon, Nat said with a smile, texting on the phone to Clint, who was on a mission with Wanda and Rhodey. Him and Uncle Sam are bringing pizzas home for dinner. Is Dr. Bruce, Uncle Thor, and Daddy going to join? Your name asked. Thor is staying on Asgard tonight, Loki said, looking up from his book. But he'll be down tomorrow for your birthday. And Uncle Strange is going to show up, too. 
Your name beamed. Hey, do you know what you want for your birthday? Natasha asked. Your dad keeps saying you'd want a pony. Your name giggled. We can't get a pony. Daddy's being silly, but... She looked up thoughtfully. A puppy would be nice. Yeah? Nat asked excitedly. She couldn't have her own kids, so your name was the closest she could get. And she loved her like her own. Really, they all did. Even Loki. Do you know what kind? Um, one that's good with kids, your name said matter-of-factly. Like a Dalmatian, or a Golden Retriever? Steve asked. Your name nodded excitedly. Yeah! Steve and Nat shared a secret smile, and then Bucky's and Sam came in with the pizzas, followed by Bruce, Tony, and Pietro. Hey, hoghead, Bucky teased, wrapping your name up in a huge hug. Teddy! Your name squealed in excitement. You're home! Yep, Bucky said, kissing the top of her head, looking over her shoulder at the homework. What are the weirdo teachers making you do now? They're not weird, your name pouted adorably. And this is an essay. I have to interview someone that I look up to, and I was going to ask you and Loki. Loki said to ask you since he was here first. Can I interview you, please? Bucky was touched that she looked up to him. Yeah, of course you can, honey bear. Your name beamed again. But you gotta eat first, Sam said with a grin, putting the pizzas down on the counter. Steve got up to help him with the plates. Did you get all of the homework except the essay done? Tony asked, kissing the side of his daughter's head. She nodded and said, But I would like Dr. Bruce to look over my science homework, please. Of course I will, Bruce answered, and you know that you can just call me Bruce, kiddo. I know, your name answered, putting her homework back in her backpack. But I want to be respect, res, 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 respect. Here, Angel, Sam said, handing her a plate with two pizza slices on it. Thank you. So what did you say earlier when I told you Tony wanted to get you a pony? Nat asked, throwing Tony a teasing smile. Your name giggled, lighting up the moods of every person in the room. He's silly. We don't have room for a pony. Sure we do, Tony protested. We have plenty of space inside. Your name shook your head and continued to giggle. Let's get a puppy in STEM, or a bunny, or me and Teddy could get a baby bear. I like that idea, Bucky perked up, and he held out his fist gently so she could bump it as hard as she could. Steve shook his head in amusement. They finished dinner quickly. Bucky, Sam, and Your Name ran around the living room, chasing each other with pillows, while Bruce looked over Your Name's science homework, and the others chatted casually. Your Name squealed as Bucky picked her up and flew her over his head. I'm flying! Yes, you are, Angel. Sam grinned, flying straight. He leapt up and grabbed her out of Bucky's arms. Into my arms. No, your name giggled, trying to get away. Daddy, Daddy, the monster got me. Tony chuckled and rescued her from Sam's grasp. Ah, now Daddy is the hero, isn't he? Bucky gently kicked Tony in the balls. Tony groaned, lowering your name to the ground to cover his private parts. Your name didn't notice as Steve held out his arms out getting down on one knee and said the princess needs to come home to the castle now my prince your name squealed throwing herself into steve's arms and laughing as he picked her up and then carried her off to bed ow what was that for tony complained now that your name was out of earshot bucky chuckled i think you should be more worried about your daughter calling steve her prince tony snorted no i think you should be more worried about giving her siblings in the future the others roared with laughter. Read me a bedtime story? Your name asked Steve happily. Steve smiled, going over to her bookcase and pulling out a huge book that contained every fairy tale in the world. It was heavy and thick with old parchment and old hand-drawn illustrations. They were also the original fairy tales, too, so not the new ones that had been rewritten. Which one do you want to hear tonight? Steve asked, flipping open the book carefully. Him, Sam, Clint, and Rhody had taken turns reading every single story in here to her. Um, the one about Little Red Riding Hood, she said happily, wrapping her arms around the teddy bear that Wanda had given her for Christmas. Okay, Steve said softly, opened up the page, and read until she fell asleep. Chapter 2 your name went off to school the next day, and immediately the others jumped into their plans of making her twelfth birthday extra special. Thor had come down from Asgard, bringing with him Asgardian liquor. 
Loki put a hand over his face in disappointment while Natasha and Sam had laughed their asses off. "'You oaf!' Loki shouted, waving his hands dramatically like the diva he was. "'You cannot give that little girl as guardian liquor. The drinking age is twenty-one and she can't drink that stuff.' "'I did not know. We always drank it on our twelfth birthday,' Thor said, looking disappointed. He brightened up almost immediately. "'I know. I shall go and get her Pop-Tarts.' He ran off and Loki had to race after him, screaming for Thor to stop because you already had a humongous stash of Pop-Tarts from Christmas from him. Natasha swiped the liquor as the two gods exited the compound. Excellent, she said, and hid it behind some cups. Pietro entered the room at that moment, shaking his head, wiping dirt off his hair from the, into the trash can. What the heck did you do? Sam questioned, looking at Pietro with a questioning look. I was speeding along the side of the compound, and one of the clods of dirt that the gardener was shoveling hit me in the face. It was unintentional. He didn't know I was going to end up at there at that time, Pietro said, shaking his head like a dog. He's digging? Nat asked in surprise. I think he's putting in trees, Pietro shrugged, wiping more dirt off of him. The holes are too deep for flowers. Yeah, because you barely even dig for flowers, Sam rolled his eyes. He could be putting in bushes, though. And I think Tony said he'd been wanting to put fruit trees in for some time now. That must be what they are. Oh yeah, Nat said with a nod. I forgot about that. What kind of fruit? I think he said apples, Sam said, trying to remember. Not sure. Either way, Nat said in a friendly way. Probably you should go take a shower, Piet. I don't think you're going to get all the mud out by shaking your head like a dog. He rolled his eyes but went off for a shower, and then Nat and Sam went to make Your Name's Cake. Your name skipped home, excited. She couldn't believe that she was already twelve. It had been such a fun day in school, too. She had handed out cupcakes to all of her classmates and then played kickball during recess. And they learned more about the moons of different planets and science. Not to mention they'd studied Mr. Rogers and Teddy in history. But now she couldn't wait to get home and be with her family for her birthday. She was really hoping that they had gotten her a dog to play with. She couldn't wait to see Uncle Thorn hold his hammer and Uncle Strange had been teaching her how to use a sling ring and make orange portals. Plus, she hadn't seen Uncle Strange in almost four months. "'Hey, Missy,' Mr. Gates greeted her. She could see that he had dug a very large hole on the side of the compound, but he wasn't over there to mo anymore. Today he was greeting her at the sidewalk. "'Hello, Mr. Gates,' she said, beaming. "'How is the gardening today?' "'Very good,' he said joyfully. "'Hey, do you like baby animals?' Yes, she squealed. Well, I've got some bird eggs that are hatching right now. Do you want to come and see them? Yes, please, she said. All right, come with me, he said, holding his hand out. She took it eagerly and let him lead her over to where his house was, set back on the property near the forest edge. Now, he dropped his voice to a soft whisper, approach the nest over there carefully and quietly. You don't want to frighten them after they've just been born. Your name crept quietly over to where the nest was sitting in a patch of sunlight on the table. There were four beautiful robin blue eggs in the nest, and one of them had deep cracks going down it. She was enthralled, so she never even noticed Mr. Gates creeping up behind her, and she certainly didn't see it coming when he brought the shovel down on her head. Chapter 3 Tony checked the clock and noticed that it was exactly four in the afternoon. That was very weird, because your name should have checked in on him at least ten minutes ago, if not five at the very latest. She was never late. She was always home by 3.45. Friday, has your name come home yet? Tony asked his mostly silent AI. No, sir. Would you like me to track her through the camera system? The Irish-accented ro robot asked. Tony hesitated. He didn't want to overreact, but he also didn't want to hesitate in case something actually had happened to his daughter. Not yet. Can you tell me when she left the school? Friday was quiet for a moment, probably researching it just as Sam and Steve came into the room. Tony held a finger up as Sam went to speak. She left the school at the same time she always does, Mr. Stark. 3.20. Fear gripped Tony's heart, and he stood up striding past the other two men without acknowledging them and heading over to where he could put holograms up. Show me the camera she would use to get home, along with a map with her normal walking route. A map appeared with a red line connecting from your name school to the Avengers compound. Then smaller blue dots highlighted each camera on the route. 
The cameras popped up, and they watched as your name skipped through the camera frames. Tony couldn't find anything that showed she was being followed by anyone or anything. There weren't even any suspicious cars. What's going on, Tony? Sam asked urgently. Is something wrong with your name? She's not home, Tony fretted. She's always home before now. Tony watched your name skip out of the last frame, and then there were no more until after the Avengers compound. Tony frowned. Why wasn't there a camera directly across from the compound? Hadn't there been a camera when he built the compound? Friday, why isn't there a camera across from the compound? There is, sir, Friday answered, but it seems like the camera was broken several months ago. Fuck, Tony snapped, and this is the farthest you can track her. He pointed to the camera where your name last passed out of the frame. It was about seven or eight blocks from the tower, where her favorite ice cream parlor was. Maybe she went inside? But no, she was skipping past it and never came back. Let's go alert the rest of the team, Sam said, touching Tony's elbow, and we can put out a search immediately. Friday, let us know if she returns to the tower immediately. Of course, Mr. Wilson, Friday responded. The three of them almost ran upstairs to the living room. The shades had been drawn so that they couldn't see outside. It was to block the light for when, the lit, for when they lit the candles on the cake. Bucky was kneeling down, playing with the Dalmatian puppy they'd gotten for your name. They looked up when the three of them rushed into the room. Tony? Sam? Steve? What's wrong? Natasha asked. Your name's missing, Steve barked out. What? Bucky asked, leaping to his feet with the others. We can go and search for her immediately. Loki almost snarled, knives appearing in his hands. First things first, Sam said, putting out a hand to stop Pietro from racing out of the tower to search the grounds. Pietro, can you call your sister? Wanda, Clint, and Rhodey are going to want to know immediately. Buck, do you think it's possible Hydra could have taken her? Bucky hesitated, and then answered, I mean it is, yes. I'm sure even if they didn't know the two of us were close, they'd still take her just because of Stark. Why didn't she have protection detail on her? Happy is supposed to tail her every day, Tony said, shaking his head. I knew she wanted to walk back and forth to school and have a little freedom, but it always made me worried. So I put Happy to tailing her. But I made him run an errand today. Mr. Gates, the gardener, he needed fertilizer and couldn't put all of it in his car, so I made Happy and go and get it. Fuck, this is all my fault. Hey, whoa, Nat said, stepping forward and touching his arm. This isn't your fault. It was just an off chance that they must have known someone. Tony said, gripping his hair and attempting to pull his hair out. Pietro was speaking rapid fires to Covey and into the phone. He got off the phone after a moment and said, They're coming home from the mission. I'm going to search the grounds. Steve nodded and said, I'll head out. Check her favorite spots. I'll come with you, Bucky offered. Steve sh shook his head. We should all look separately. We'll cover more ground that way. Keep in touch to clear places off. Sam, maybe you and Tony could take to the sky. Sure thing, Cap, Sam said, and he ran from the room to grab his wings. I'll get Wong to help me, Dr. Strange said, opening up a portal and stepping through immediately. We'll find, him. we'll find her, Tony, Nat said, putting the little puppy in his cage so that he couldn't get into any trouble while they were all out. The dog whined, putting his nose down onto the blanket that was your name's. I promise. We have to, Tony said, trying to breathe. Nat helped him sit down on the couch. I have to. She's all that I have left of her mother. She's all I have left of my family. Nat felt like crying, but didn't. They would find the little girl that they all loved, or she was going to kill someone. Four. Hours turned into days, days turned into weeks, and weeks sadly turned into months. There was no sign of your name. It was almost as though she had vanished into midair. Tony did not take it well. When he wasn't searching for his daughter, he was locking himself away in the lab. He refused to drink, so he got himself lost in work instead. Loki became more sullen and withdrawn, glaring at anyone within a ten-foot radius of himself, mostly staying quiet and reading. Bucky and Steve didn't give up, still following leads that were given to them, even after lead after lead ended up in a cold trail. But there was nothing. There weren't even witnesses to tell them what had happened to her. They thought their best bet was a Hydra base, so Bucky was trying to remember where they all were, but all the ones they visited were always empty, abandoned for what seemed like centuries with the amount of cobwebs that were in them. The police declared her dead after four months. It was not a good day for the Avengers. She's not dead, Tony chanted, hugging his arms around his body while he sat on the couch. She's not. She can't be. She's only twelve. Of course she's not, Natasha would say. But whenever Tony wasn't in the room, she would look over at everyone else and say, We have to brace ourselves. We can op hope all we want. But we all know, deep down, that she's not coming back alive. 
They did know it, but if they continued to look for her, pretended that she was still alive, waiting for them to save her, then they could breathe just a little easier. At six months they were all dejected. They all sat in the living room, and Natasha sighed. Tony? No. Tony snapped, eyes rimmed red. He wasn't the only one crying, of course. Bucky was pretending to be asleep. His face pressed into a pillow so that the others couldn't see he was crying. Wanda was weeping into Rhody's shoulder. Nat, on the other hand, just had tears streaming down her face. But she was silent about them, and her voice didn't shake when she spoke. I'm sorry, Tony, but Hydra doesn't have her. And, Tony, God, you know I don't want to believe this either, but we have- No. Tony snapped. He stood up. I'm going on a walk. You should take Spot with you, Sam said softly. Tony glared at him. You can't name him. He's your name's dog. She'll name him when he gets back. Bruce just shook his head, standing up and going over to where Spot was laying down. You want to go on a walk? Spot jumped up. We should all go on a walk, Stephen said, standing up as well, trying not to show how much your name's absence was affecting him. She had been showing so much promise as a magician, and he missed her creative mind. It'll clear our heads, and the sunlight will do us some goods. Just make sure you keep Spot on a leash, Rhody warned. Mr. Gate hates it when he tries digging in the flower beds. Nat looked up suddenly, but didn't say anything. She turned to Bruce and held out her hand. Could I walk him? Yeah, of course, Bruce said. They all exited silently. Tony led the way mostly, and they all sort of followed behind. Rhody and Bruce caught up to Tony, walking with him silently. Natasha, Buckus, Bucky, Steve, Sam, and Clint walked behind them. Pietro, Wanda, Stephen, Loki, and Thor walked behind them. The walk did seem to help them up, a lot of them. Soon, Sam was even making jokes with Clint to make Steve, Bucky, and Natasha laugh, but there was still a heaviness to their hearts. You think this will ever go away? Natasha asked sadly, even though she already knew the answer. The Avengers already knew lessons about loss, like losing your name's mother, or losing vision to Thanos, or losing Pepper when she snapped instead of Tony. No, Clint said, putting an arm around Nat's shoulders, but eventually we'll bear it better. Mr. Gates was tending to the flower bushes alongside the camp compound wall. Hey, he called out with a friendly wave. Tony raised a hand and started to engage in conversation with him. Nat felt Spot pulling at his leash, wanting to go to the flower beds. She shrugged, letting him off the leash, and Clint handed her a ball. She threw it and Spot bounded after her. Good boy, she murmured as he brought it back to her, wagging his tail happily. Nothing, Rhody answered for Tony, who was swept up in emotions to answer whatever question Mr. Gates had asked. I'm very sorry for your— She's not dead, Anthony, Tony snapped at his gardener. Sorry, Bruce muttered quietly to the gardener. It's not you, of course. No, it's completely understandable, Mr. Gates said, shaking his hand in pity. Believe me, I know. My own daughter went missing a long time ago. Really? Natasha asked, feeling saddened by his news. She was eleven, turning twelve just like your daughter, Mr. Gates nodded to Tony. I didn't have much for her birthday, but I did what I could, except she just never came home. Waited and waited, called the police, and they said they couldn't report her missing for another sixteen hours, because they had to do this twenty-four hour wait period. Never found her. That was twenty years ago. I'm sorry for your loss, Natasha murmured at the same time as Bruce. Mr. Gates blinked tears from his eyes and nodded. Not so bad now. Found ways to cope, and hey! He shouted angrily suddenly, and they all spun to see Spot digging furiously in the flower bed. Stop that! I'm so sorry. I'll get him. Clint rushed across the yard and grabbed Spot's collar, trying to pull him away from the flower bed. Bad. Clint cut off, seeing that the flowers were uprooted and thought he could see pink cloth under the soil. He frowned, letting go of Spot's collar, allowing the dog to continue to dig, until he was uncovering the torso of someone lying in the soil. Clint swore he saw red, and Bucky, who had joined him, acted upon his red. Bucky stormed over to Mr. Gates, his hand shooting out to grab him around the throat. Bucky! Steve shouted. Stop! What are you doing? Is winter you killed your name? Bucky snarled, hand tightening around Mr. Gates' throat. And you buried her in the fucking flower bed. 
Steve finally got Bucky away from Mr. Gates when Nat turned her gun on the gardener. Steve rushed over to see that Rhody had made Spot sit back while Clint and Sam had finished uncovering the entire body. Your name had always been a little kid, but seeing her now in this makeshift grave really made them all realize just how small she had been. Steve felt sick, trembling all over, the way he felt when he didn't have the serum and he got a bad asthma attack. To be fair, most of the skin had rotted away. The only thing that really gave off the fact that she was your name was the shoes on her feet white shoes with Captain America faces on them, and black ink that had all the Avengers' names signed on it. They'd all signed them for her, and her hands, which were tied together with now broken and frayed rope, were on her chest so that her hand was clasped around a locket. Steve knelt down, gently pulling the locket from between her fingers, lifting it over her head and opened it. Inside was a picture of the whole team, with your name sitting between Rhodey and Tony, a huge grin on her face. Steve quickly moved the locket out of the way so his tears didn't stain the picture. Steve, they're going to kill him, Sam said in a broken voice, looking over at where Tony had jumped Mr. Gates, trying to beat him to death, while Rhodey and Pietro tried to meditate it. But if they pulled Tony away, then Bucky was stepping in, trying to choke him out. Suddenly, Levi floated over, wrapping itself around Your Name's body, gently floating her out to lay her on the ground. We'll give her a proper burial. Stephen said, waving his hand so that, though she didn't come back to life, she looked more human. At their expressions, he said, the way she should have looked if she'd gone through the mortuary. They all rejoined the others, and Steve handed the locket to Tony, who was wiping tears off his face. Why? Steve asked the question they all wanted to know the answer to. Steve knelt down, reaching out and grabbing the front of the gardener's jacket, lifting him off the ground, putting him back on his feet. He gave him a shake. Why? Because he's a serial killer, Loki's voice said from behind him. They all saw that Loki had just come from his house, and he was holding a huge book. That's my prized possession, Mr. Gates gasped, lunging for it. Pietro grabbed his collar, yanking him back into place. Look. Loki said, opening up the first page. The first two pages, side by side, were of a young girl. It started with his daughter. She was the first one that he killed. There were pictures, first of her life. His daughter smiling. There were some notes about her favorite things, or her eyes and what not. There was two pictures, right above each other, on the last page. One was a picture of her looking terrified, duct tape across her mouth and her hands tied. It didn't show him, himself but it showed his prick as least, inside his own daughter. The second picture was under that one, of her laying in a makeshift grave. Her eyes still open. He had buried his own daughter alive. Loki flipped through the pages. There were at least thirty of them in here, the last one ending with your name. You, Tony said in a cold voice. You raped my daughter, and then you buried her alive. I gave you a job. How could you do that to her? To me? It wasn't anything against you, Mr. Stark. You gotta understand that, Mr. Gates said sincerely, passionately. Steve felt sick with how this man didn't feel he'd done anything wrong. But she was so sweet and nice, and so gorgeous. Her trim was so Bunky's... Bucky's punch landed squarely on his cheek, causing his head to snap to the side, blood splo fl starting to flow from the gardener's mouth. That was my honey bear! Bucky spun to look at Steve. Please let me kill him, Stevie, please. Honey bear, Mr. Gates muttered, reminds me of her last words. What were they? Tony snapped. Mr. Gates smiled serenely. I wrote him down. Everyone looked at Loki, who scanned the last page. He swallowed. I'm surprised you let her say so much. I like giving them a little peace. Makes them go easier, Mr. Gates grunted. Loki put a finger on the words and said in a shaking voice that betrayed his emotions, Daddy needs to know I love him. Mr. Rogers died being so brave, and I can be like him. Auntie Nat was like a second mum. Teddy gave me my favorite hugs. Uncle Strange taught me magic things. Uncle Sam gave me my favorite books. Bruce said I could call him by his first name. Hulk didn't scare me. Uncle Rhodey was supposed to take me flying. Uncle Thor was supposed to show me Asgard. Wanda gave me my favorite stuffed animal. Pietro was like an older brother. Uncle Clint was going to teach me how to shoot. And Mr. Loki told me that bad people go to jail. 
like you. Steve felt the tears falling down his face drop onto his shirt. In her final moments, knowing she was going to die, she remembered him. She remembered the stories that he had told her of being brave, and she had held on to that so she wasn't scared. Loki had an almost smile on his face, like he was proud of what your name had said about him. Bucky was openly weeping, along with Nat, Clint, and Wanda. Bruce stumbled away from everyone, slowly turning green, trying to fight it down. You're going to jail for the rest of your life, that's for damn sure, Rhodey said angrily. Like hell, Bucky seethed, looking at everyone. Surely there can't possibly be a problem with me killing him. Bucky, we're better than him, Steve said, pulling Bucky away gently. The gentleness did the trick, and Bucky buried his face into Steve's shoulder. But I want him to pay. I want him to hurt. I know, Steve whispered, hugging Bucky tighter. I know. I'm with Barnes, Tony said coldly. You're dead, Gates. No one could stop him as he raised the Iron Man blaster on his hand and blasted it straight through Anthony Gates' chest. He dropped at Loki's feet. Loki wrinkled his nose, kicking him away. Tony? Rhodey muttered, but Tony had already walked away, kneeling next to your name's body. Steve held Bucky tighter. Come on, Clint said gently to Wanda as he wiped his own face. Let's go inside. Bruce, is the Hulk okay? Nat asked quietly. She remembered both of us, Bruce said hoarsely. She could have screamed for help, but instead she rattled off both the Hulk and me. Nat pulled him into a hug, crying herself. I know. She was the sweetest girl, Bruce. Rhodey called the police while Sam and Pietro helped to bring your name's body inside. A coroner and a mortician both fixed up your body for an open casket burial and put her in a coffin. Tony had the funeral that day. It was too long awaited to put it off any longer. Police dug around on the Avengers compound and found eight more bodies that Mr. Gates had buried on the property. DNA tests were done. Parents or siblings were contract contacted. The book that Loki found was proof enough. No charges were even pressed on the death of Mr. Gates. In fact, most regarded the entire incident as a non-tragic accident. Case closed. Come on, Spot, Tony called as he walked through the park. He knew that he needed to hurry home to where the rest of the Avengers were waiting for him. Spot raced over to him, and the two of them walked back to the compound. Tony placed the flowers that he had bought that day on his daughter's grave, kneeling there for a moment to talk to his daughter. I miss you every day you're not here, but I know now that you're happy and you're in a bright, beautiful place. I'm kind of imagining your heaven is like a princess castle. Hopefully your prince butler is not as handsome as Steve, because he definitely misses you. He stood up and Spots followed him into the compound. They're all in the living room, Mr. Stark, Friday told him. Thanks, Friday, Tony responded and headed into the elevator. Then he and Spot exited, joining the rest of the Avengers in the living room. Hey. Hey, Steve said from where he was sitting on the couch. He was glancing off to the side where Bucky was bouncing a baby boy on his lap. How was the walk? I feel better, thanks, Tony said, sitting down in his chair. He looked over at Wanda, who was pregnant, curling up close with Rhodey, the father. So the gender reveal? I'm sorry I missed it. Girls, Rhodey said with, a sh with shining eyes. Twins. Carson is going to be all outnumbered, aren't you, bud? Bucky cooed at the little boy in his lap. Even though the kid was all Wanda and Rhodey's, the entire group treated him like their own, just as they had with your name. Tony smiled gently, missing your name with every passing moment. Anyways, Rhodey said hesitantly, Juan and I were wondering, you know, we wouldn't name either of them your name if you didn't want to, but maybe a variation, or making your name one of their middle names? Tony felt tears prick his eyes, and he nodded. Yeah, that would be, that would be special. Other name, then, will be one of their names, Wanda said happily. Like, if your name is Elizabeth, you could change the girl's name to Isabel or Beth. Everly could become Eve or Everly. Emma could be Emmeline or M, etc. Tony smiled at that. Nat hugged Tony tightly and murmured, I'm glad you're feeling better today. It had been three years, and he didn't feel good all the time, but it was getting better. Me too. I'll get there. Natasha gave him a soft look, and no one is rushing you there. Take all the time you need. Tony looked around at all the people that he considered family, and then he looked at back at Nat. I will. 
because it wasn't something any of them talked about anymore. It was too unspeakable. The End